Hello to the tuba players of the USA Central Territory. My name is Les Nish and I'm a tuba player, originally from Liverpool but based in Northern Ireland. I've been living in Northern Ireland now for 10 years uh, with my wife and my two young children and my good friend and in fact best man at my wedding, uh, Dr Jonathan Corry, asked if I would put together just a short video just to talk a little bit about the piece that some of you will be preparing, Little David Play. Now I had a little look at this piece today and it really is great to see lots of technical hurdles in this piece and I hope you're all enjoying getting to grips with some of those technical aspects as you're preparing the piece. As you can see in the opening it begins with a cadenza so this gives you a chance to really showcase your sound, showcase some kind of technical skill and really just set the performance off in the right way. One important thing though with a, a cadenza, whether it be in a piece like this or any piece, is that I always think it's important to think of the word relationship. And that's the relationship of the rhythm. Lots of us kind of think that when we have a cadenza, we have the opportunity to play freely, which we do to an extent, but there still needs to be an underlying pulse and an underlying rhythm whenever we have notes that want to move a little bit quicker and then slow down to create that rubato feel. And the way I always think about this is if we take a tennis ball and we bounce that on the ground, the ball will bounce and come back up and then it will go back down and it probably won't come up as far and then so on and so on. And the ball will gradually bounce faster and faster and faster, but it will do it in kind of a regular pattern. It won't just bounce once and then all of a sudden bounce very quickly. And it's kind of the same with these cadenza passages. So as you start to do the accelerando that's marked, you need to do it in a really progressive way. And then obviously the way we slow down needs to balance with that as well. So just think about that word relationship as you're preparing those cadenzas. <laughs> Now as we move on to figure five, the Allegro Giacoso, uh, we notice there that there's a, a trill. Now I always find trills to be quite difficult uh, on the tuba and, and sometimes they're not always clear. So do work hard at figure five for that opening trill to see if you can get some real clarity between the two notes. And you'll see that I also use um, an alternative fingering on my E flat tuba for that particular trill just to try and help with the clarity. Now moving on to figure 13, one of the big words I would be thinking of here is rhythm and also clarity. Two of the most important things for many brass players, but especially tuba players, and it is that word clarity. We have to try and play as clearly as possible all the time, especially as this piece progresses because we get more and more quicker rhythms within the piece. And it's important to note as well that clarity doesn't necessarily always come from the way we tongue. Clarity is really from the air that we put down the instrument and the sound that we produce. So if I look at figure 31, for instance, this would be a section I would actually practice just with the air to begin with. So I would do something a little like this. And you'll hear right at the end there, I put lots of energy into the crescendo and also the accent at figure 39. What I would then do is I would add the fingers to that to really think about how I can coordinate the air, the tongue and the fingers. Yeah, and if I practice that a few times, really focus on the air, make sure the air sounds secure, then add the fingers and make sure they really coordinate with the tongue and the air. I then just apply those things onto the tuba itself. <laughs> Moving on into the later sections of the piece, again, like I mentioned, there are some technical hurdles. So 
it's really important to, to get the metronome on and practice these sections quite slowly so you really get to grips with some of the more technical aspects and making sure that the fingers do line up with the tongue and the air. And one important thing, especially from figure 50 onwards, right to the end of the piece, is that there's a huge amount of detail in the articulations. We've got different types of accents that are marked. We've also got lots of dynamics to look out for as well. So it's really important you take a good look at all of those and try and work hard to bring them out because it's the articulations and the dynamics that bring any piece of music to life and if you can do that then you'll be on the right track for sure as we get towards figure 96 and the vivace section all the way to the end this is really a chance for you to give the final flourish of the piece so don't be afraid to really go for it especially as we reach that fortissimo dynamic at the end and really enjoy that last note. You move up to that last note and really enjoy that fortissimo. Nice big sound and then release the note as well as you can. So I wish you all the best with your preparations and your performance of this piece. Thanks very much. Hi to the tuba players of the USA Central Territory. My name is Les Nish and my good friend Dr Jonathan Corey has asked me just to put together a short video just to introduce you and help you with your preparations of the piece Celestial Morn by Les Comden. I have to say Les Leslie is a very good name I think. Um, so I've had the opportunity to perform this piece on many occasions and in fact I've also had the, the great chance to also record the piece as well. I've recorded it with the Foden's band many, many years ago. And more recently, I got the chance to not only record but perform this piece in a tribute concert to Major Leslie Condon, which was held at Regent Hall in London. And it was with the Croydon Citadel Band and conductor Ian Parkhouse. And as part of that performance, we then spent an evening recording a CD dedicated to Leslie Condon and his brass band works. I have to admit, Celestial Morn is one of my favourite concert and solo pieces and like I've mentioned I always enjoy getting the chance to perform this particular work. The piece starts in quite an interesting manner with the cadenza and it really gives you a chance just to showcase some of your sound through the range of the instrument and also your legato phrasing so really just listen out for the sound and the legato phrasing and one thing that's important here is at the end of each of the cadenza sections there's a little pause and if you can just think about how you're going to release the note at the end of that pause and see if you can release the note in in the most beautiful manner We now come to the section marked Leggiero and quite a brisk tempo as well at crotchet equals 144. So it's really important here that when you practice this, you might practice it a little bit slower to begin and then gradually increase the tempo on the metronome. But what's important here is even though it goes at quite a quick pace and there's some technical hurdles to overcome, that we have that Leggiero light and joyful kind of feel. That's the most important thing. It's important to try and avoid rushing at this point because if we rush, then the chances we're gonna lose that real light approach that's, that's required in this particular section. We now get to a, a real fun part of the piece, Mark Giacoso. On my part, it is figure 63. And it's kind of a fun little section, this, and it always makes me smile whenever I get to prepare and perform this piece of music. And I think here, it really is that kind of gregarious, outgoing character of the tuba player being shown. So just kind of 
harness that kind of feeling uh, as you're playing this section and like I say kind of play this with a smile on your face we then get to the beautiful part of the piece a real lovely slow lyrical melody and my main advice here and not only to you but also I also remind myself whenever I have to practice this particular piece of music is that all I'm trying to do is create the most beautiful legato I can during this melody and I'm always thinking about how I begin a note and how I articulate the note in just the right way I'm thinking about the vibrato that I might use as I'm playing this particular melody and then I just think about how I release the end of a note and how that then begins the next and I'm conscious of that all the time whenever I, whenever I play this particular melody. It really is beautiful and it gives you a chance to showcase your sound but also your musical approach as well and don't be afraid to really shape these phrases. There's no doubt that there's lots of fun in this piece and you'll find all the quirkiness and the joy that, that is in the piece as you're preparing it. And right at the end, as we get to that vivace, it really gives you a chance to show off all the way to the wonderful Alorganda at the end. And I know that from my performances, usually before I get to the last note, the audience are ready uh, to applaud because they've really enjoyed such a fantastic piece of writing for the tuba. So whenever I get to that Alorgando right at the end, I really do enjoy myself and show off the biggest sound that I can make all the way to the end. But like I say, this piece is definitely full of joy and you should certainly play this with a smile on your face. And I hope you have as much fun preparing this piece of music as I do when I prepare and perform it. Thank you.